Good morning. We have the Tales of Tiptoes Lights Lightly by Reg Down. And I'm going to read starting at chapter 13. Jeremy Mouse picks blackberries. Let's see. Glasses. Jeremy Mouse didn't want to walk along the beach with tiptoes, and looking for crystals was something gnomes do. So he ran off to visit Jemima Mouse. She lived in Sandy Bank, where the sand dunes met the forest. Jeremy Mouse, Jeremy Mouse, or Jemima Mouse, Jemima Mouse, he called. Yoo-hoo, are you at home? Jemima Mouse poked her head out of the doorway. What are you doing here, she asked in surprise. We came to untangle octopus, Jeremy Mouse replied. Not again, she laughed. When will he ever learn to count to eight? Jeremy Mouse shook his head. He felt shy. He liked Jemima. She had beautiful fur and an extra long tail. Let's pick blackberries, he said. They're ripe. The blackberries were very ripe. They were shiny and sweet. Jemima Mouse climbed along a blackberry bramble and inched toward the end, hanging on tight. The branch dipped its head toward the ground until Jemima could pick the juicy fruit. Be careful, she said as the branch bobbed up and down. Don't fall off. Suddenly the wind started blowing. It happened so quickly that Jeremy Mouse did not have time to get off the bramble. Hang on, cried Jemima, hang on. I'm hanging as hard as I can, shouted Jeremy Mouse as the wind bobbed the branch up and down, side to side, and even round and round. Suddenly a fierce gust blew and Jer Jeremy Mouse couldn't hang on anymore. Jemima saw him sail into the air like a bird with his legs and tail waving in the air. She could not hear clearly what he was saying before he vanished out of sight, but it sounded like, help! Jeremy Mouse, Jeremy Mouse, where are you? She cried, running to look for him. Here I am, he called. Jemima ran in circles but could not find him. Here I am, called Jeremy Mouse again, but she still couldn't see him. Look up, Jemima, I'm in the tree. She looked up, and there he was, safe and sound, at the top of a birch tree. You can see forever from here, he called. I can see the cliffs and the rock pools and tiptoes walking on the beach, even running river. And look, I can also see our acorn boat. It's on the shore. Let's tell tiptoes. He scurried down the tree as quickly as he could, and they ran to tell tiptoes what he had found. Sailing home. Pinecone and Pepperpot waved goodbye to Crab as he clambered into his rock pool. It's getting late, said Pinecone. Let's go find Tiptoes and Jeremy Mouse. They climbed over the rocks to the beach. There they are, and Jemima Mouse, too, said Pepperpot, pointing down the shore. What are they pulling out of the water? It looks like a boat. It is a boat, cried Pinecone as they got closer. Look what we found, shouted Jeremy Mouse. It's our acorn boat. Tiptoes says the storm blew her from the river bank and running river carried her out to sea. Now the wind has blown her back again. She's had an adventure. By my beard, said Pinecone. How else could she get here? Now you can sail home. It's getting late, said Tiptoes. Jeremy Mouse and I will sail and you can row along with us. We're staying another day, replied Pepperpot. We saw a beautiful crystal and want to see it again tomorrow. Jeremy Mouse scratched his head. He did not understand why anyone would want to look at a crystal two days in a row, but of course he had not seen the blue one in Crystal Cave. Tiptoes and Jeremy Mouse pushed their boat into the water and climbed in. Goodbye, Pinecone and Pepperpot. Goodbye, Jemima Mouse, they called as they sailed up Running River. Goodbye, waved Jeremy, Jemima Mouse and the gnomes. Cheerio! The sun hung low in the sky and the wind blew them steadily along. They passed the house of Duck. She sat in her nest with her ducklings. Some were asleep already, and some were peeking out from under her wings. They passed Big Rock, too, but it was bare. Slowly, the sun sank out of sight. The silver moon climbed up into the sky, and Running River was covered with dancing moonbeams. When they tied their acorn boat to the shore, stars were twinkling brightly, and the wind was only a gentle breeze. Good night, Jeremy Mouse, sang Tiptoes from her acorn house high in the great oak. Good night, Tiptoes, called Jeremy Mouse from his house amongst the roots. Then he curled his tail round his head and went to sleep.
this next section is called Book Two inside the big book, The Tales of Tiptoes Lightly. And the first one says down here, there's sort of three short stories. The Bee Who Lost His Buzz, which we just read all the rest of that. I guess that the, bee, the story about the bee was the beginning part of what we just finished. And the next one is called Pumpkin Crow. And the last story is called Lucy Goose and the Half Egg. So three different stories within this and many chapters within each story. So I'll start Pumpkin Crow. Tiptoes meets Mr. Crow. Tiptoes house hangs by a stem near the top of the great oak tree. It sways back and forth in the breeze, but never falls down. That's because she's stuck it to the branch with a magic charm. Tiptoes was inside, combing her golden yellow hair and singing. Autumn wears a misty dress, every twig by dewdrops blessed. Leaves are falling, nights grow long, running river sings her song. Crows are calling from tree to tree, and here comes one to bother me. Ah, said Mr. Crow loudly, ah, looking in her window. Caw to you, Mr. Crow, replied Tiptoes, putting her hands on her hips. She was annoyed with him. He was so rude, he never knocked. Then she noticed that Mr. Crow looked uncomfortable, which was not at all normal for him. He hopped from foot to foot and wiped his beak on a branch. How? D do you know my great uncle Two Tails and his wife Baldy? he asked. I do, replied Tiptoes. They have five children, said Mr. Crow. They are my second cousins on my grandmother's side. Tiptoes nodded her head but didn't say a word. She tried to look as bored and uninterested as possible. Crows live in big families and love to talk about their aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews, grandparents and cousins five times removed. Don't ever ask a crow about his family. My second cousin's names are Black Feather Crow, Black Eye Crow, Black Foot Crow, Black Toe Crow, and, and, and what? asked Tiptoes. She was curious now. And Pumpkin Crow, croaked Mr. Crow in a hoarse whisper, peering around nervously. Pumpkin Crow, cried Tiptoes, surprised. Yes, said Mr. Crow, looking embarrassed. He got his head stuck inside a pumpkin last fall. That's how he got his name, and well... Now, uh, Mr. Crow did not want to finish the story. It was such an embarrassing thing for his family. I see, said Tiptoes, who knew how proud crows were of their kin. So why are you telling me all this, she asked. Well, now, it seems, he hesitated nervously. Mr. Crow blushed bright red. A blushing crow is really a horrible sight. Now, now uh, he continued, pumpkin crow is... His head caught in another one. Tiptoes tried not to smile. It's not funny, said Mr. Crow. He's really stuck. Okay, said Tiptoes. I'll come. And off they flew. Pumpkin Crow is pulled. Tiptoes and Mr. Crow flew high over the fields of Farmer John. Some fields were green, some were golden, and some were dark, dark brown. They saw Farmer Brown working in the orchard with his son, Tom Nutcracker. They were picking persimmons. The persimmon trees had already lost all their leaves, but were covered with bright orangey-red fruit. They make the orchard look like a Chinese festival with lanterns hanging from the trees. I guess that's a persimmon. Soon they came to the pumpkin patch. There were hundreds of pumpkins, but they quickly found the right one. It was the only one with a crow stuck to it. How are we going to get his head out? asked Mr. Crow. Let's pull, said Tiptoes. Mr. Crow grabbed his cousin's tail with his beak. And Tiptoes stood behind Mr. Crow and pulled his tail feathers. They pulled hard, but Pumpkin Crow was stuck fast. Can't you use magic, asked Mr. Crow, hopefully. I don't know any spells for getting crows unstuck from pumpkins, replied Tiptoes. She scratched her head and twirled a lock of her hair. I'll get Jeremy Mouse, she said at last. Perhaps he can help. Pumpkin Crow is pulled again. Jeremy Mouse was in the wheat field gleaning grain from the ground. Mr. Crow's cousin has his head stuck in a pumpkin, said Mrs. said Tiptoes. You have to help. We can't pull him out. Not again, sighed Jeremy Mouse. I'll come quickly. He soon arrived in the pumpkin patch. 
Jeremy Mouse scratched his head and pulled his whiskers for a long time. I don't know, he said. This looks difficult. Poor Pumpkin Crow. Sometimes he pulled as hard as he could trying to get free. Sometimes he flapped his wings and said loud things which nobody could hear properly. It looked like he was trying to teach the pumpkin how to fly, but pumpkins didn't move, the pumpkin didn't move an inch and sta sat still as it could be on the ground. Let's all pull together, suggested Jeremy Mouse at last. So Mr. Crow grabbed Pumpkin Crow's tail. Jeremy Mouse grabbed Mr. Crow's tail. Tiptoes grabbed Jeremy Mouse's tail. And they pulled and pulled and pulled. But Pumpkin Crow stayed stuck in the pumpkin. Oh dear, cried Mr. Crow. What are we going to do? The gnomes see Mr. Crow and tiptoes flying. Pinecone and Pepperpot were helping a squirrel to store nuts in the hollow of a tree. Pepperpot stacked the nuts neatly while Pinecone gathered them from the ground. Mr. Squirrel ran up and down the tree trunk with a nut in each cheek and one in his teeth. It wasn't long before the hollow was full to the top and Pepperpot clambered down the trunk. All done, said Mr. Squirrel, wiping his paws and flicking his tail. Now I have lots of food and won't go hungry in wintertime. And off he scampered to find dry grass to line his nest. Pinecone and Pepperpot decided to wander through the forest. A gentle breeze swayed the branches back and forth, and golden leaves fluttered down. Mushrooms poked their heads up here and there, and the gnomes searched under the pine cones for pine mushrooms. Pine mushrooms are delicious to eat, especially in harvest stew. Oh, look, cried Pinecone, looking up. There's Tiptoes and Mr. Crow. Why are they flying so fast? Let's go see, said Pepperpot, and off they raced. They came to the edge of the forest just in time to see them landing. They're landing in the pumpkin patch, puffed Pinecone. He was out of breath. At last they came to the pumpkin patch, but all they saw were hundreds of pumpkins and withered vines. They climbed up on the stalk of the biggest pumpkin and uh, they could find and stood on top. There they are, cried Pinecone, over by the other side, he pointed. Tiptoes, tiptoes, cried Pepperpot loudly. Tiptoes, tiptoes, cried Pinecone. Pumpkin Crow is pulled once more. Tiptoes heard Pinecone and Pepperpot calling. Over here, she shouted. Come quickly, Mr. Crow's cousin is stuck in a pumpkin. Oh, my goodness gracious me, said Pinecone when he saw a pumpkin crow. By my beard, said Pepperpot, such a sight I have never seen. How will we get him out, asked Mr. Crow. Pinecone and Pepperpot scratched their beards for a long time. They took off their red caps, pulled on their ears, and put their caps on again. That's what gnomes do when they have to think hard. Let's all pull together, said Pinecone at last. So Mr. Crow grabbed Pumpkin Crow's tail with his beak. Pinecone grabbed Mr. Crow's tail, and Pepperpot grabbed Pinecone's coat tail, and Jeremy Mouse grabbed Pepperpot's coat tail, and Tiptoes grabbed Jeremy Mouse's tail, and they pulled and pulled all together. Suddenly, Pumpkin Crow's head came out with a pop, pop and they all fell backwards in a heap. Squawk, called Pumpkin, Pumpkin Crow. Ah, squawked Mr. Crow. Oof, oof, grunted the pinecone and pepper pot. Squeak, squealed Jeremy Mouse. Tiptoes covered her mouth with her hand and giggled. She was too nimble and had flitted out of the way when they all fell down. I'm free, I'm free, cried Pumpkin Crow, flapping his wings and dancing round and round. Thank you, thank you, thank you for pulling me out. But how did you get your head stuck inside? asked Pinecone, picking himself up and dusting off his trousers. The pumpkin had a soft spot, said Pumpkin Crow, so I pecked it, and my pecking made a hole, and the hole showed me the delicious pumpkin seeds inside. My head went in to get some, but wouldn't come out again. But how can you do the same silly thing twice? scolded Mr. Crow, exasperated. He was most annoyed by the whole thing. He was sure the story would get around the entire countryside. Oh, pumpkin seeds are so yummy, I just couldn't resist them, said Pumpkin Crow. Oh, but I promise I'll never do it again. And he flew away towards the forest. What a goose, muttered Mr. Crow, and flew off after him. I think that is a good place to stop, and we will continue it on Monday. <laughs>